All right, we're going to talk about King Solomon's Temple. This is the second part of a two-part series. The first part was called The Messiah. And I highly suggest that you need to see the first part, the first video, called The Messiah in order to understand the flow into the subject we're now going to talk about, which is King Solomon's Temple. Uh, <clears throat> it's a very famous story about King Solomon, the wise King Solomon in ancient Israel and his great temple. But the problem we're going to find out to start with is that the Temple Institute in Jerusalem has spent approximately $27 million dollars on preparations for rebuilding of the ancient Jewish temple called Solomon's Temple. And of course, all over the world, people are watching and keenly anticipating as Christians and Jews are watching around the world that great and glorious Solomon's Temple to be rebuilt in Jerusalem, <clears throat> which will inaugurate some great and glorious time for the human race. Well, the only problem is, upon closer examination of the history of the region, you'll find that the first thing you need to know about the ancient temple of King Solomon is that there was no ancient king named Solomon, and he didn't have any temple either. Two of the best archaeologists, and I repeat, two of the best archaeologists, top-of-the-line archaeologists of Israel, have written a book called The Bible on Earth, Archaeology's New Vision of Ancient Israel and the Origins of Its Sacred Text. And in this book, and it's not the only one, this is one of many, but it's just one of the better ones, the authors explain how the ancient stories of the ancient Israel never existed. There was no ancient Israel <clears throat> there was no King Solomon. Uh, I will go on to say there was no Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. These are all metaphors, symbolic terms. These ancient people we'll read about in the Old Testament and ancient Israel uh, actually never existed. And therefore, there was no ancient Israel, which means there was no ancient King Solomon. And therefore, there was no ancient King Solomon's temple. So whatever they're spending money on, it's the first time anything has ever been done because there was no ancient King Solomon or a temple. So you go to Google, if you wish, and type in King Solomon myth, and you'll see there's over a million two hundred thousand uh, results of <clears throat> articles about King Solomon mythology. All the ancient uh, reference works talk about the mythology of ancient King Solomon, that who never lived. There was no temple, and there was no King Solomon. In archaeology, some of the articles uh, says the empire of David and Solomon is not mentioned in any ancient Near Eastern source. Monumental reliefs and statues, palaces, ivories, jewelry, and all the normal signs of a sophistication required to run an empire are lacking. Donald Redford, author and leading authority on the era, writes in frustration about the absence of everything to verify the biblical stories. We have many different authors talking about the absence of any uh, legitimate uh, document showing that there was an ancient Israel or an ancient uh, kings, Solomon, David, etc. These are all stories, but they're not backed up by actual history. Nothing can be unequivocally attributed to Solomon, nor is there any trace of the great culture that he developed. And Hazar, Megiddo, Gezar have been widely excavated, and palaces, temples, and fortifications have been found, but no mention of Solomon. People believe such myths and they succeed in their purpose because they are attractive stories and convincing. If they were not, they, wouldn't, they would be useless. The popularity of myths cannot be any evidence of their truth. So just because a million people and millions of people believe something doesn't mean it's true. 
So we see that the absence of any historical confirmation of a Solomon simply does not deter biblical scholars. And this is interesting. I'll say it again. The absence of any historical confirmation of a Solomon or his temple simply does not deter biblical scholars. God has told them that there was a Solomon, so what scholarship can contradict it? Basically what this is saying is, look, it, it doesn't matter if he existed or not. <clears throat> the Bible says so, and that's the way it is. Even if it didn't exist, we'll accept it as if it did exist. The evidence of the first temple is always faint. Uh, we can go on to read about how uh, what evidence is there for the Temple of Solomon, those indoctrinated into biblical mythology, as history might be surprised to know that the only evidence is in the Bible. There are no other documentary records or archaeological evidences for it, nor are there any documentary records of a King Solomon or any archaeological site that can be attributed to a King Solomon though some were once were. Only biblicists biblicist, stick to the former erroneous associations of certain buildings and gates with King Solomon. There was no unequivocal archaeological evidence of a King Solomon at all, period. So we got all kinds of quotes about uh, from reference works from all over the world, the antiquities, you know, this is interesting too about antiquities. The Antiquities scam exposed the gullibility of believers. Israel Finkelstein, one of the top archaeologists in Israel, a noted Israeli archaeologist, observed that inscribed objects are extremely rare in proper archaeological digs in Palestine, and yet the Antiquities market keeps producing them by the carloads. So, for getting actual, in fact, legitimate uh, archaeological finds is extremely rare at best. But the, uh, but the market for these archaeological discoveries is just over, it's just a carloads of this stuff is being found. So we can tell you that it's the gullibility of people believing in such things that keeps this market going. Never mind then the roots are illusionary but they are an evidence for them are false. Religious beliefs does not depend on evidence at all. So for pious Jews and Christians, false evidence is as good as any. Uh, actually, what it's saying is it doesn't matter what the, uh, what the historical evidence, as long as you are a holy and righteous Christian who love the Lord Jesus, uh, you, you, know, you will believe whatever it is you want to believe. But the fact of the matter is, there was no ancient Israel, there was no King Solomon or any temple. Again, one of the best places I have found, and there are many places on the web that has a lot of good information on the background of King Solomon myth, but there's one in particular you can find on Google called askwhy.com.uk. Check out that whole site. There's a lot of information on their documentary materials you'll want to know about. Solomon did not exist. Here's another from Finkelstein and Silverman's book. The archaeological evidence in Jerusalem for the famous building projects of Solomon is non-existent. 19th and 20th century excavations of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem failed to identify even a trace of Solomon's fabled temple or, pal or palace complex. And so we go on, <clears throat> we are, the, the, you know, we have so many different reference works in the library where you can find that the evidence for the empire, empire of Solomon, is deceptively abundant. It is abundant in Jewish scriptures and nowhere else, period. Yet biblical archaeologists who would be struck off to register if they were doctors have doctored so much archaeological evidence that religious pundits today think Solomon is a well-established historical figure. So if these people who are telling us that Solomon's temple was a right, was, uh, was there, was an actual historical place, if they were doctors, they would have been kicked out of the profession a long time ago. But because they're dealing with religion, I mean, you can say anything. Anything is viable now. So we see, that again, no reference or evidence that any Solomon ever lived I go as a matter of fact, if you want to go on Google or any other search engine or go to a library, 
and look up the word Saul Om On because that's where the word Solomon comes from. Saul, Om, and On. Saul is the ancient Roman god personification of the sun, the Greek Helios. <clears throat> so Saul is Latin for the sun. Om, of course, is the Hindu meditation symbol for the principle of life. And so Om is the holy meditation symbol in Hinduism. It is believed to be immortal, inexhaustible, and is interpreted as a symbolic expression of the creative spirit. 